This video is brought to you by Muveen. I'll talk more about these cut resistant Dex Fit gloves later down in the video. Alright people, let's get started. So, first I start off by selecting all the skateboards that I'm going to use and I'm going through all the skateboards and trying to pick out the ones with a little bit more colorful graphics and stickers. And I stacked it a little too high and it fell and I have to pick all that back up. Now, I'm not exactly sure how many skateboards I'm going to use for this project. Is it gonna be enough? We'll see. But I think it's gonna be enough. Now, once I have all the skateboards selected, I have to take off the grip tape first. And I'm using my D Gripper 5000, which is a toaster oven and a slow rotating motor on the bottom. And as I slowly feed it to heat up the boards, I could take off the grip tape and put in the next one, and it's really easy to do. Now, once I have the grip tape off, I can start cross cutting them on the miter saw. And I'm chopping these skateboards up into different sections, like the nose and the tail, as well as the hardware piece, which is where the truck holes are. Now the miter saw creates a lot of dust so make sure to wear your RZ mask and if you want to save some money make sure to use Wobi RZ20 at checkout and get 20% off. I'll talk more about it later in the video. And for this project I'm only using the middle section of these skateboards and I'm saving the rest for future projects. Now in order to use the middle section of these skateboards I set the fence quarter inch away from the blade and I'm pretty much cutting off the rounded edges of these skateboards. And you're pretty much jointing these boards before you start ripping them into thinner strips. Now once I cut the rounded edges off, I can start ripping them on the table saw. And the final size I'm trying to go for is one inch strips, so I'm actually setting the fence a little bit wider than that. And I'm doing this for all the boards and I'm making sure that my hands are safe with the push stick. Now, since all skateboards have some sort of concave, there's no way that these strips are going to be square on both sides. So as you can see, we have to cut this little edge off and uh, make it square. So I set the fence one inch away from the blade, which is the final size that I'm trying to go for, and I make sure that it's going to square up all these skateboard strips and cut off that little extra piece that's left over from the concave. Now, since my shop is connected to a gas station, a lot of people think my shop is the bathroom because there's no sign or anything. So I need to make some sort of sign that says this is not the bathroom. Now, turning these skateboards into these strips took the entire day and pretty much I was in the same position making repetitive cuts, like thousands of cuts. And so I had to make sure I gave it a really good stretch and I have all these skateboard strips ready to go. And I have the leftovers, which is the nose and the tails and the hardware pieces. And we can move on to the next step. Now, since I decided to use broken skateboards, I have all these broken edges on the end of these strips. So I have to actually cut that off and I'm cutting it off a little bit wider so that I could use it for future projects and I'm squaring up the other ends of it and pretty much I have to do this a thousand times again. Now I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to do with these broken cut off pieces but I think I have some sort of idea where I could cast it with epoxy and make some sort of pattern and maybe even carve it so we'll play around with that idea in the future. And since I'm wearing gloves I could do this. And this pretty much took another 4-5 or five hours and you would think I'm done at this point but I still have a whole lot to do so yeah it's a lot of work using these skateboards. Now most of these skateboards have color veneers or graphics on both top and bottom of these skateboards and if I resaw them I could actually double up on my materials. And the top is usually clean enough where I could just sand it and have a brand new material that I could play with. And I made this resawing jig where I could just keep feeding the skateboard strips without my hands getting near the blade and it's been working really great. Now the plywood works as a zero clearance plate as well as there's a fence and there's a feather board that keeps all the strips aligned every single time. So all I have to do is just focus on not getting my hands near the blade and just keep feeding these skateboard strips. And I attached the box so that I could just keep catching it and dumping it out and start a new batch and just looking at it actually makes me tired. So yeah, I do that for all the strips. 
And finally, I have to sand these down to even thickness and get rid of all these bandsaw marks. And uh, yeah, that's how you turn skateboards into usable lumber. Real quick, I want to thank the sponsor of this video, which is Muveen. Since I work with my hands, it is extremely important for me to keep my hands safe. I have been trying to get into a habit of wearing gloves whenever I have the chance when I'm in the shop. And just a disclaimer, yes, it is extremely dangerous to wear gloves around rotating power tools. And I highly recommend beginners not to wear gloves around rotating power tools since if you make a mistake, that mistake is going to be 10 times worse than it would be without gloves. However, there's always a safer way to work and keep your hands safe. Now, most of my accidents happen when I'm handling materials or when I'm using hand tools like chisels or knives. And that's the reason why I started wearing these Muveen's Dexfit cut resistant gloves whenever I have the chance. Whether I'm handling materials with sharp edges or using hand tools, these Dexfit cut resistant gloves keep my hands safe from potential accidents. These Dexfit cut resistant gloves are food safe, machine washable, cut resistant, touch screen compatible, and they fit nice and snug to your fingers so it feels just like having a second skin. So try to get into a habit of wearing gloves when it's necessary and keep your hands safe with these Muveen's Dexfit cut resistant gloves. I'll have the link down in the description below. Thank you Muveen for sponsoring this video. Now, once I have all the skateboard strips ready to go, I can start attaching them to this one inch thick Baltic birch plywood. Now, the final size of this tabletop ended up being about 32 inches by 60 inches by one and a quarter inch maybe. And I'm using a straight edge to make sure that all these strips end up being perfectly straight. And pretty much, I'm ready to start stripping, I mean, start attaching the strips. Now I'm gluing these skateboard strips with CA glue and activator and I'm just doing it at random and I'm just making sure that all these strips are perfectly straight and using a straight edge to mark a line and pretty much using a CA glue and an activator. Now I make sure to clean up any glue residue that's left over from the CA glue and uh, make sure that everything is perfectly aligned. And I try to make sure not to use the same skateboard near the same skateboard, I guess, and try to make it all different and different strips. And at the end, I ran out of activator, so I just had to hold the skateboard strips in place. And pretty much I had the tabletop ready to pretty much trim up and move on to the next step. And just as I predicted, I have enough leftover to make a coffee table. Now I can start cutting this tabletop to its final size and I'm just rough cutting them with the circular saw. Now there's a lot of you who is looking to buy a track saw for this specific task, but let me show you exactly what I do. And this has been working out for me. So I just rough cut it and just flush trim them with the flush trim router bit. And that's way cheaper than buying a $500 track saw. And as long as you have a straight edge, um, which you could just double up on any of these cheap rulers and pretty much you're good to go. Now, I'm going to show you a technique that I like to use where I use the walnut strips as a frame as well as the mold for the epoxy so I don't have to do anything special and I just pretty much kill two birds with one stone. So I set the fence about quarter inch thicker than the tabletop itself and I pretty much cut out three strips from this uh, walnut. I think this is about half inch thick and I start cross cutting them so that I could make it into a frame. Now in order to get the perfect miter I use this uh, miter sled and I first cut it and then mark it and then pretty much creep up on these cuts and make several cuts until I get the right fit. And I could just keep moving on to the next side and pretty much this is how I get the perfect miters and 
sometimes it's a little bit off, but a lot of times you could just fix it with glue and sawdust, so that's good enough. And then I could start gluing these walnut strips to the tabletop itself, and I'm trying to avoid having any glue squeeze out on the tabletop, so I'm only applying the glue on the bottom of these walnut strips. Now, since I'm going to cover up this entire tabletop with epoxy, you don't need that much clamping pressure to hold these strips in place. It just needs to stay on until you pour the epoxy. Now, once the glue dries, I could start sealing the bottom of this tabletop so that none of the epoxy starts leaking out and create a whole lot of mess. So what I do is I just use glue and sawdust and I just seal any gaps between the frame and the tabletop itself. Now, one of the main reasons why I like to use epoxy to cover up these skateboards is these skateboards are disgusting. It's been all over the place and it's been on the streets. So I like to use Total Boat's two to one high performance epoxy to cover up these skateboards. And it kind of makes it look like a glass top, which I really like. And I could start spreading around the epoxy to the edges of this tabletop and I could start picking up any of the debris that's left over and I could start popping all the bubbles with the heat gun and pretty much leave it overnight and I could just come back the next day. Now the next day, the epoxy had cured and everything looked good and it looked like a nice glass top. But I actually have to sand it back down, so let me show you how I do that. Now the walnut frame is a lot higher than the table itself, so I actually like to flesh trim this with the router bit instead of sanding it down and wasting a whole lot of sandpaper. So that's what I'm doing here. Now I highly recommend this quarter inch compression flesh trim bit from Bits and Bits. That's a lot of bits. But I've been using this bit for the longest time and it's acer coated, which means it's gonna last a lot longer than traditional bits. So make sure to check it out. I'll have the link down in the description below. Now, once I have the walnut frame flush with the tabletop, I could start sanding. And I'm using an 80 grit sandpaper to make everything flat. And I'm doing this both front and the back side of this tabletop. And once the tabletop is nice and flat, I could start chamfering the edges, both front and the back, and pretty much I could start getting ready to bring back the shine on this epoxy. Now, sanding sucks, and I'm pretty sure watching me sanding sucks even more, so I'll just skip to the good part and show you exactly how it looks after each grit. And I'm pretty much dry sanding up to 400 grits and I start wet sanding up to 4,000 grits and I bring back the shine by polishing it and once I put the finish on, it looks real nice because the walnut frame is satin but the tabletop itself is nice and shiny. Now for finish, I just made it easy on myself and put Ori's oil and wiped it on and wipe off any excess and pretty much I called it done and here it is. Here it is, a dining table made out of recycled skateboards and using graphics and the stickers as the pattern. I'm using the graphics and the designs on the board to create this pattern and I'm very happy with how it came out. For those of you who's wondering where I get my skateboards from, I get it from skate shops. Skaters break their board, they get a new one at the skate shop and drop off the old broken skateboard at the skate shop. And majority of these skate shops don't know what to do with these broken skateboards and they usually end up in a landfill. So I started reaching out to local skate shops and explain what I do with these broken skateboards and now they save these skateboards for me and when they have too many they actually call me to come pick it up so if you want to get your hands on some broken skateboards try contacting your local skate shop and explain what you can do with these broken skateboards
Now, the biggest challenge of using skateboards to make something is turning these skateboards with multiple different concaves into a usable lumber. And I experimented with all types of different ways to use these skateboards as usable lumber. So if you want to check it out, I have several videos in my YouTube channel. Now, I wanna give a huge shout out to RZ Mass for sponsoring this channel. Fine dust will always be the biggest problem in woodworking and is extremely important to keep yourself protected. I personally really like this M2.5 mask with two straps. It's super easy to put on and no matter how aggressively I move, it stays on my face. And a lot of the time, I forget that I have the mask on since it's super comfortable and it doesn't restrict my airflow. So make sure to get yourself a good, protective, and comfortable mask from RZ Mask. And use the coupon code WOBYRZ20 and get yourself 20% off. Thank you RZ Mask for sponsoring this channel. And I also want to give a huge shout out to Totobo. These old broken skateboards have been on the streets and they're disgusting and filthy and I like to use this technique to pour 2 to 1 high performance epoxy over these skateboards to make it like a glass top. The walnut strips are about a quarter inch higher than the table to act as a mold. And I seal the bottom so none of the epoxy leaks out by using glue and sawdust. And once it's cured, I can flush trim the frame and sand it flat and bring back the shine by wet sanding up to 4000 grit and polishing it. This technique allows me to keep the frame satin but the tabletop shiny, which I personally really like. Total Boat has all kinds of different products to choose from, so make sure to check out their website. And use the coupon code down in the description below to get a fat discount. Thanks, Total Boat. And that's it for this video. I'm actually in New York right now for my seasonal day job and that's why I'm recording it inside of a hotel room. So please, if you don't like this audio, that's what you get. Now, if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to this channel, hit that like button, and comment down below what you think about this dining table made out of recycled skateboards. Thanks again, and until next time.